everybody, and welcome to my show, my new show. And I'm here with Mr. Kane, my French teacher at Shepherd Hill. Hello, Mr. Kane. How are you doing? <laughs> now, I have a question for you. Okay. So, when you were younger, six, seven, eight, and someone asked you what you wanted to be when you grew up, I'm assuming your response wasn't always a French teacher. Not no. at all. Nope. <laughs> what was that? Uh, when I first, or oh, um, if I think back, my first thing was I wanted to be an artist. Uh, oh. I wanted to paint and do fun, creative things. And uh, I realized, I think, pretty quickly that that wasn't going to sustain <laughs> me. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, as I got a little older, like 10 or 11, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be a veterinarian. Oh. I used to check all the books in the mm -hmm. library out because, of course, at that time we didn't have online things. Yes. I used to check all the books out on uh, animals and mm -hmm. every little thing, and I used to love going to the zoo and all sorts of stuff. Still do. But, um, yeah, I thought it was going to be a veterinarian. So that is very different from a French teacher. <laughs> Absolutely. So can you explain to me and everyone else how you got to be a French teacher or how that happened, how that became to be? <laughs> well, as I got older into high school, I actually thought I wanted to go into law or um, international relations. So I went to George Washington University my first year of college, mm -hmm. and I, went, I was in the international relations program, and there were hundreds of us. And I realized pretty quickly that all of us were not going to be the next Secretary of State, yeah. uh, and that we were going to be just part of a machine of foreign service and mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't terribly happy at the school mm -hmm. uh, because of how large it was, you know. My largest class was 400 kids, and my chemistry class was 400 kids. Yeah. So I ended up going to Assumption uh, oh, in Worcester yeah. after a year and saying, okay, what do I really want to do? Mm -hmm. Okay, what are, my, what are str my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And then, of course, languages. And I said, well, let's, let's try the teaching thing for mm -hmm. a little bit. It seems kind of natural, so that's what I did. Okay, well, you're a French teacher, and you're very fluent in that. So going on to my next <coughs> question is, how did you become so fluent in this language, strong enough to teach yeah. all these high schoolers? Well, um, I had French one as a freshman in mm -hmm. high school. I had an exploratory eighth grade program, but French one. And I, in my infinite wisdom, decided that uh, the first semester of my sophomore year of high school, mm -hmm. I was going to be an exchange student. And I went and for six months lived in Nice, France, That's right on the Riviera. Amazing. That uh, and beautiful. I went to a French high school. Um, I look back on it now and think, what, what was I thinking? Uh, <laughs> because I had French one. I mean, yeah. I basically could say yeah. hello and my name is, and mm -hmm. uh, I dropped myself baptism by fire mm -hmm. into France and a yep. French speaking high school. So. And of course, it was even better because when I got there, they put me in higher level classes than I really should have yeah. been because of what I needed to take. So I was taking physics and chemistry mm -hmm. in French. Uh, and then I had, oh to take, I had to take a French class, yeah. like you take your English class. Mm -hmm. So I was in there studying real French literature and symbolism and all this, yeah. you know, very technical stuff which certainly wasn't what I was, would have been learning in my French 2 class when yeah. back home. The only joke was the, the idea that I had to take an English class uh, oh. <laughs> because I had to keep up with what I would be taking back home. Mm -hmm. So I had to take an English class, which... Pass that with flying colors. Well, you would think so, but I had a British French teacher, or a British oh, English teacher. I see, I see. Uh, and was reminded almost on a daily basis that I did not speak English. I spoke American. Um, and okay. we butt heads frequently because, you know, British English is very different than American English. Yes. And he reminded me of that frequently. Uh, one of the, uh, the most influential days of my life was actually that first day of school in really? France. Um, I have never been more mentally exhausted in my I life. I can never imagine, yeah having gone through a day of French high school, mm -hmm. just trying to take it all in. 
How were your days in the high school? How did they look like compared compared to like yeah, the U.S.? Yeah, compared to the U.S., they're totally different. Totally. Um, basically, the the French high school system is set up like almost like our college system is. Oh. So we had an open campus. You went to you know you had certain classes Monday, Wednesday, yeah. Friday. Certain classes Tuesday, Thursday. You know maybe you had a class at eight o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm from 8 to 9.15, and then maybe not again until 11. Uh, and between 12 and 2, everybody goes home for lunch, um, for the most part. Oh. So it's two hours for lunch, as opposed to our 21 minutes. Our 21 minutes. <laughs> and uh, you can get used to that pretty quickly. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. But you're in school until about 5 o'clock in the evening, because th there's oh, really no after-school activities, that sort of stuff. You can do club sports and stuff, mm -hmm. but you're in class pretty significantly in the afternoon oh, okay. slash evening and you had or I had a half day on Wednesdays mm -hmm. so I didn't have classes in the afternoon but I also had a half day on Saturday mornings Saturdays too yeah Saturday mornings oh my goodness yeah I college had, experience in high school almost yes similar. yes it, it was great though I mean yeah it sounds wonderful and you're very tracked mm -hmm. in uh, the French high school system where you know you pick a track as soon as you get into high school. Oh. I was in the science track for whatever mm. reason. Um, <laughs> and so that's why I ended up with physics and chemistry. Oh, I but, see. Uh, you know, they're the humanities tracks and, and whatever. And mm -hmm. again, I still had to take like gym, um, which is not the gym mm -hmm. that we're used to in the United States. It was basically physical education. I'll never forget having to take like gymnastics. Um, I had to learn how to do the pommel horse and the rings and everything. And it was, it was like the most horrifying thing. Oh my goodness. Because that stuff takes a yeah. lot of strength to yeah, do. Yeah, 100%. And everybody else was perfectly like, used to doing it. And yeah. I was like, but we're but supposed to new. be playing kickball and, you know. You know, gym Gym, <laughs> gym class. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was a, a little interesting experience. Well, that's an amazing experience yeah. going to front. Wow. And that's then beautiful. I came home and, of course, it was I... They struggled to figure out where to put me. Yeah. Cause uh, and unfortunately, they wouldn't let me jump, like, levels. Yeah, yeah, so I, I ended up back in French 3, or French 2, excuse mm -hmm. me, where I was already... And that's why sometimes some of the things I teach come a little naturally to me, mm -hmm. because when I was there, I learned everything in reverse. Oh, okay. I learned what was natural, mm -hmm. and I knew, okay, this is the way my friends were speaking, so this is what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. And then when I got back to the U.S., I was like, I learned what these things were. Oh, I see what you mean. So you adapt, you kind of adapted like, to I already it knew more? the imperfect yeah. before I knew what it was. Oh, I, I just see, knew yeah. that the sounds coming out of my mouth were correct. <laughs> and then I came home, and it was like, oh, that's what I've been using. Mm -hmm. So these these difficulties that normal language speakers struggle with, mm -hmm. I wasn't struggling with them because I learned them in reverse. So I learned them naturally first mm -hmm. and then learned the rules. Okay. Um, so it's... So, wow. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. That's, <laughs> that's, super, that's super cool, actually. <laughs> well, so you said you started learning French the first year of freshman year. Yes. And so did I. My question to you is, what do you think is different from a French-speaking student and a Spanish-speaking student? Like, what do you think attracts them more to speaking French rather than Spanish? Well, the problem with our society mm -hmm. is actually, I mean, French used to be the most popular language to take mm -hmm. for, for decades, in fact, for centuries, because French was the primary language of communication that, mm -hmm. for business, for international affairs. Yep. It's... It, until probably the past maybe 15 or 20 years where Spanish, Spanish. has really started to take over. Mm -hmm. uh, and my thing with that is it's, it really is about language, yep. not about which language you take. Okay. Um, because for me, learning a language is also learning culture. It's Literature. learning how to look at the world differently. Mm -hmm. It's learning how to understand that we are not the world doesn't exist just as the United States. Mm -hmm. It goes far and beyond that. And yeah, you're going to use Spanish, but most, or you're going to use Spanish, you're going to use French, but most Americans take language 
and one of their favorite things to tell a language teacher is, I took four years of whatever language and I can't speak a word. Yeah. Well, you can't speak a word because you haven't spoken it in 20 years. So, Very true. You know, if you stop speaking English and whatever, you'd forget English. For, yeah. Um, so anything you don't practice just sort of fossilizes yep. and goes away. So it's not about the language. You know, I remember I used to teach a, a K through 12 summer program yep. in language. And we didn't have any spaces left for the little ones, uh, the mm -hmm. K through three in Spanish, but we had plenty of spaces in French. Okay. And one of the parents said, oh, well, this is not useful for my, st my child. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you really, like at seven years old, do you yeah. really think it's about language and exactly. them being able to speak to somebody versus teaching a seven-year-old that there is a world out there? and that mm -hmm. not everybody speaks English and mm -hmm. that not everybody thinks like we do. And, you know, it's, so it's always, you know, it's, it's always a battle with um, people. Well, f Spanish is so much more useful. Okay, in some cases, yeah. yes, but in some cases, no. Um, I find myself, I, I work at a shelter in Worcester and I find myself using Spanish all the time, but I also use my French mm -hmm. um, because we have a lot of uh, African immigrants coming yeah. in um, from various French-speaking countries there as well. So it's about understanding the notions that mm -hmm. there are differences out there and we all aren't the same. That's what I love about your class because I've realized over the past two years that you have a lot of projects too, but they're not just about language. It's like expanding on the culture, yeah. which is helpful because my freshman year, you weren't here for, yes. for Shepherd Hill, but I found it being more like really formal and hard for me to learn. But like okay. with your teaching and with like learning culture and learning language, it's like cooperated in, which I find easier to learn. So, and I think a lot of my peers also believe that's well, true. Well, and, and my philosophy really is maybe in 20 years, you never use French again, mm -hmm. but did you learn how to think about the world in different ways and different perspectives? Yes. And understand same. that everybody doesn't think like we do. Exactly. That ultimately is the goal for me in language teaching. It's not making you a, a native speaker. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah, the language is great. The language is mm -hmm. awesome. But also the levels of culture, the levels mm -hmm. of philosophy, the levels of the way the French look at the world, which is mm -hmm. very different than the way we look at the world. And I think sometimes we, as a, people from the United States yep. need to learn a little bit more about the way others mm -hmm. look at the same thing that we do. I agree. I agree. So. Yeah, so with that being said, I, I remember a couple weeks ago you mentioned in class how French, so I'm in French 3 right now, mm -hmm. French 4 becoming an AP. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on French for possible? It's a possibility. Yeah. Am I right? It is. Yes. So what are your thoughts on that? Because well, I'm just excited. I've taught so AP before. Um, AP is pretty, pretty intensive, mm -hmm. but I like to do it in a way where like we sort of immerse ourselves mm -hmm. in what we're doing. So maybe it's not just learning in the four walls. Maybe it's, hey, we're going to meet tonight at a French bistro in Boston, and it's going to be straight French. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn the straight French. Um, because a lot for me is not just the AP score. Um, I've had several experiences in the past where my students have scored OK on the exam, but have shown me their proficiency in so many better ways. Yes. Um, yes, yes. So for example, I had a student who struggled with the exam and the exam is a three hour period of one day. It's very hard. Very so it's a drop in the bucket yeah. compared to what you do all year. And I brought this young woman to, uh, to France with me and we we're in Paris mm -hmm. and the hotel mangled our reservation yep. for her room only. And I didn't know at, at okay. first. So a few hours later, I come down and they said, oh, you know, we're sorry about the mix-up. And mm -hmm. I said, well, what mix-up? I don't, under, you know, yeah, don't know what you, you're talking yeah. about. And they, I, she says, oh, well, I, I spoke to your student. We took care of it all, and it's all set now. And I said, wait a minute. So I brought her over, and I said, what, what happened? Mm -hmm. So she explained to me, 
and I said to the you know receptionist, I said, "You did this. This was all in French, right?" She says, "Oh yeah, we took care of it all. You know, your student speaks great French." And I was like, oh, "You know, my theory is, I'd rather that than whatever a number is on Agreed. an exam." Yep. Um, you know, the same with a, a former student that went to BC, graduated valedictorian, mm -hmm. struggled a little bit on the exam, mm -hmm. went to BC, scored so much off the charts that they didn't know where to place them. Um, That's so amazing, yeah. For me, it's about like becoming okay, becoming natural, and no matter what it is in language, you've got to be okay with number one sounding funny. <laughs> yes. Um, and traditionally, people from the United States are not good at that yep. um, because we have to be always at the top of our game. And when you're learning a language, you're just not. Yeah, you're, uh, you can't be. And it's, particularly in French, yeah. with the accent, and it takes everything. a while. Mm -hmm. um, again, like my accent is, is fairly near native mm -hmm. because I've been there and I've lived there so many yeah. times over years. It's practice constantly. You know, somebody said to me today, well, how many languages do you speak? And I told them, and they said, well, all of them can't be at the same level. And I said, no, they're not. No. Because yeah. the fact that I speak Arabic and German, I don't use those very much. Exactly. So yeah. they calcify and sort of drop out of my brain, whereas Spanish and French I'm using every day. Practice makes perfect. Well, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah. The, I like that, too, because when you're having this AP exam, I, I'm taking multiple APs and I'm yeah. nervous for yeah. them because I've been doing pretty good with every yeah. other of my courses, but with a three hour test, you have to recall everything you learned. Yes. So well, and another thing I did though was once I became certified to teach AP, yeah. I went and corrected the AP exams nationally mm -hmm. uh, because my theory was I'm going to, I'm going to defeat them at their own game. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and ultimately it's what can I, I mean, I sat there, the last time I corrected uh, French APs, I did 3,000 speaking samples myself. That's what I That's, did all day for eight oh hours a day. Oh my goodness. And in, or, but that gave me a better insight into what my students needed mm -hmm. and how I needed to teach. And there was a year, for example, we were transitioning between uh, cassette tapes and CDs and um, digital recordings. Yeah. So we had three different groups correcting. Yeah. And we were finding that the scores for the people on the tapes, the, the, the actual mm -hmm. cassette tapes, were lower. Oh. And it was simply, what we were discovering was they were more frustrated with the lack oh. of ease mm -hmm. Because you have to go back and forth sometimes. You listen to it, you go back to it, mm -hmm. you go back to it again. Then you're, then you're scoring it a second time and, and trying to figure it all out. They were more frustrated because of being on a cassette tape than I was on the CD where mm -hmm. I could just drag it on, on, on the computer. So that said to me, okay, we need to get rid of the cassettes. Yes. Because they need to be on CDs or digital. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was always join them and defeat them at their own game, basically. Yeah, and you do that all for your students. <laughs> exactly. That's you know. a whole lot of effort. That's amazing, <laughs> honestly, just to try to help them out. Yeah. Because a lot of teachers would be like, oh, well, that's your score. That's what no, you do. No, I don't but believe in that. You, yeah. Uh, you See, that's know. what's great, great quality about you, and I think. And it really shows in class, too. <laughs> well, thank you. So I think that's good. Awesome. So. Well, that is all we have for today. So thank you, Mr. Kane. Not a problem. And thank you, everyone, for listening.